so in our second part we will be moving on to compression so just before compression we have a few past paper questions to be answered the first question goes as when creating a backup protocol okay three factors that must be considered are so a goes as the data type so when it comes to backup we don't care what type of data is we don't care whether it is a video or an audio or an image what we care about is the size of the data not the data type so the answer a cannot be answer b amount of data computer processor speed and the frequency of the backup yes all three look fine so we can consider answer b answer c goes as amount of data frequency of backup and media to use sounds good so answer c also is possible let's keep b and c aside again when it comes to d d is talking about data type so the answer d is out there so now between b and c there is going to be only one answer between b and c the difference is computer processor speed and media to use so from these two which one is more important media to use is more important the storage device that you are going to use to store your backup is much more important than the computer processor speed why why is computer processor speed not as important as media to use it is because normally backups are done when the computer is not being used okay so computer processor speed is important but not as important as media to use media to use media to use is even more important okay you need to consider whether they are going to use a hard disk or a cd or a pen drive so the answer is going to be c coming into the next one one decision that sabir should make when creating a backup is which software to use identify three of the decisions he should make so we have learned of eight factors he should make so one can be he should consider whether he is going to use cloud storage or not something else is he should consider the frequency of the backup okay then something else he should consider is the physical location of the backup is he going to keep in a fireproof place waterproof place okay that is something else he has to consider okay uh, there seems to be a small problem here i think i have put the wrong answer over here this is part 2 but i have mistakenly put part 1 over here moving on to compression okay so right now we are dealing with the third part of utility software okay we finished backup we finished the fragmentation and now we move on to compression okay so compression utility is reduce the original size of a file or set of files okay so you can use compression in order to reduce the size of your files so how does compression work where there are repeated patterns of data rather than storing every repeated instance only the first instance of data is stored alongside how many times it is repeated okay so if you look at this particular piece of data okay this is an example they have given you okay this is the original form of the data okay so after compression it becomes like this so see what happens instead of repeating a 8 times what does the computer do it stores it at a 8 instead of storing b 6 times it just says b 6 instead of storing c twice it says c okay so this big file size becomes this size okay so that's how compression works okay it does not uh, repeat in where i mean wherever there are repeated patterns of data uh, what does it do it just takes one piece of that data and then mentions how many times that piece has to be repeated okay so only the first instance of the data is stored alongside how many times it has to be repeated okay so there are few examples of, of compression software okay some of you may be familiar with this okay this is known as winrar this is done by a company called 7zip okay so like this there are few examples of softwares which will do compression for you okay so once again compression is just reducing the original size of a file or set of files okay and then finally we come on to the last point under utility software which is formatting okay so disk formatting prepares storage media such as hard disk drive or usb flash drive for its first use how does it do it formatting a disk will make all of the data on the disk unreadable by normal application so when you buy a pen drive when you buy a hard disk you will be required to first format it format first format it means you will completely remove whatever is inside it okay that's what we call formatting completely deleting whatever is inside that particular storage device okay 
once you erase the data once you format the data normal applications will not be able to recover that data okay once you format data from a hard disk or a pen drive normal applications will not be able to read that data which has been deleted but then there is some specialist software okay there are some specialist softwares for example if you look over here something known as evs data recovery wizard okay if you use a software like this the data which has been deleted or the data which has been formatted can be recovered okay so normally it become normal applications example your computer if you go to my computer and open your hard disk after you format it it will say the hard disk is empty but if you have this by i mean if you have forgotten and formatted some files which you did not mean to format you can always download some specialist software for example something like easiest data recovery wizard this kind of a software what does it do it will go through your formatted hard disk and recover the recover the deleted files okay so now we have completed formatting okay under system software under system under utility software there were four parts and now we have completed all four parts of it okay so let's just go back one more step right now we were under system software and then we spoke about utility software we spoke about four parts of utility software okay and now we will be moving to the second part of system software which is operating system okay so if we come down to operating system okay the operating system allows the user to control and manage the computer's hardware okay so on the computer you have a keyboard you have a speaker you have a scanner you have a printer if you want to control these hardware devices you have to use your computer's operating system in order to communicate with these hardware devices okay don't worry we will look at it more in detail so we have examples of computer hardware or computer operating system okay so for example there is something known as the uh, mac os laptops produced by apple use an operating system which is known as mac os and there is an operating system known as linux and there is an operating system known as windows okay so right now my laptop is using windows 10 operating system then iphones will be using something which we call ios okay android smartphones will be using an operating system called android okay then there is another operating system which is free of charge which is known as ubuntu okay so like this there are various operating systems operating systems and basically allow the user to control a computer's hardware okay operating systems are of two types one is single user operating system and the other is network operating system so when we speak about single user operating system we are talking about a computer which will allow only one user to use it so for example a laptop a mobile phone a tablet a desktop pc will be using what we call a single user operating system okay uh, where only one user will be using that computer okay but if you are talking about for example a mainframe computer or a mini computer okay a computer which is going to be used by many people okay it will be using what we call a network operating system it is an operating system which is used to control many computers on a network okay so if you are using a computer which is going to be controlling other computers then that particular computer will be have will have to be using a network operating system there are many users can use that computer at the same time okay then moving on to the functions of the operating system okay at the beginning i told you the operating system is used so that the user can control the computer's hardware that is just one there are some more functions that the operating system has one is for example something which we call memory management okay now in the computer there is something there is a device which we call a ram okay so i'll just show you a picture okay first control shift escape okay right now in my computer there are so many programs that are running okay background processors so many are running so these have to be held in my computer's memory is it clear so it is my operating system that will manage this memory okay this memory is what we call ram r a m random access memory so it is my operating system which is allocating the correct amount of memory for each software okay that's what we mean by memory management allocating the correct amount of memory for each software to run on the computer okay 
then we have something called resource management now what you need to understand is in the computer we have so many things connected we have a keyboard we have a mouse we have a graphics card we have a cpu which is basically the uh, what we call the processor we have a hard disk we may have internet connection okay so there are so many resources running in your computer each of these resources have to be managed in a very efficient manner so that will be done by the operating system the operating system will carry out something which we call resource management okay managing all the resources in your computer and the third function of the operating system is controlling input and output of data in the computer okay so whatever you input into your computer and whatever your computer outputs is handled by the operating system then we have something which we call error handling whenever there is an error in your computer for example there is something wrong in your computer that particular hardware device will inform the operating system and the operating system in turn will inform you of that particular error okay so that's what we call error handling then uh, so i've just given you a screenshot of resource management then one more thing is security okay so your mobile phone might have a password your mobile phone might might have a biometric lock which might be fingerprint or voice or retina or you might have put a patent password for example all those security features are handled by your computer's operating system okay then there is something also known as print spooling print spooling is also handled by your operating system so when you send a large document to print okay those pages have to be put in the correct order for printing okay so the operating system is the person is, is the thing in charge that will make sure that the pages are printed in the correct order is it clear during large print jobs the computer will have the pages read for the printer faster than the printer can produce them okay the operating system keeps each page in a queue ready for printing this process is called a print spooling okay so keeping the pages in the correct order in a queue so that the printer can start printing them is what we call print spooling and print spooling is done by your computer's operating system okay so uh, before you start answering these questions uh, i would like you to answer from question number 5 all the way up to question number 7 just three questions you have over here uh, in our next video onwards we will be continuing from this question and then we will be moving on to uh, language translator which is a very small part and then we'll be moving on to application software